If you're one of those people who love to carry your sketchbook around and maybe get a little drawing in before your cup of coffee arrives, you might encounter items made out of metal. And if you're ever wondering, well, how do I represent that metallic item as metal, this video is for you. By the way, my name is Carolyn Peters and I'm the owner of Cura Studios, where I teach classical drawing skills to artists ready to reconnect to their creative voice. And if you like getting weekly drawing and creativity tips, ways to get you motivated and keep you drawing, be sure to subscribe to this channel and to get on my email list so you never miss one of these videos. But let's dive into the demonstration now. The first step in our drawing process is the gesture and what we do in that phase is deciding how big do we want our drawing to be and where on the page do you do we want it to end up. And so the marks we make in the beginning should be very light and erasable and drawn intuitively from your gut. and I'm often using curvy lines. Once I'm happy with the placement, I enter into the next phase of the drawing, which you see me go through right now, and that is where I become more specific with my shapes. Now you might notice the way I am getting more specific is by breaking my curvy lines into straight angles. I'm also using a central axis to assure that my item remains symmetrical. Here you see me getting into the construction of the form phase. So I'm rounding out the true form of my item. So this is a cylindrical item in parts. I'm working on that dome-like structure on top. And I'm thinking about how is the teapot touching down on the ground and arranging the little forms of my item around this central axis. The next step that I take is I squint at my object hard. So it's really blurry because what I'm doing is I'm mapping out three main shapes. My darkest shapes outline in red and you could argue that this little snippet over here could belong to it too. So you decide if you only had three values which one would be your dark groups. So I'm squinting and I'm mapping out, finding the outer edges of my dark values. And then I find my lightest value shapes. So those highlights over here. And after I have those, I know my third group by default, which are my middle values. So I'm trying to group everything into three simplified values instead of trying to capture all of the variation in the beginning. So this might look as simple as this on a little sketch, but as long as you have that in your mind and you keep clarity about which groups belong together, that will then serve as a unifying force as you keep teasing out more and more nuance within those three big value groups. Because if we fail to have clarity with what our three major value groups are, you'll end up with a hodgepodge of values that do not reinforce the idea that you're dealing with a metallic item. So make sure that the shapes that you're creating are very clearly plotted out. And what I mean by that is that they're contained. Meaning if I ask somebody, hey, cut out my dark value shapes for me, they would know exactly where the edges of those value shapes are. So no smudgy fields, but instead very clearly enclosed or outlined shapes for each value group. And remember, we arrived at those value groups by squinting crazy hard until your object that you're drawing from looks very, very blurry. So it's really easy to see how those three value groups come together. Once you have them mapped out, you start shading them in. And what I recommend, rather than pushing 100% for the darkest dark right away, you begin your value building process in layers. And you start with only aiming for about 50% of the true value. Let's begin with the darkest value shape, the darkest value group. Don't push it to 100%, push it to 50%, move on to your middle value group, push that to about 50%. And like that, you can then switch back and forth and keep dialing in. If I compare those two groups together, what do they look like in comparison to each other? As you're working within your groups, what you will want to pay attention to are the edges of these smaller value shapes inside of your big value shapes. 
So look at this for example. Do you see this edge right here? All of those edges that are circled are sharp edges. So make sure that as you're building the value, you keep them very sharp and crisp. Now look at these values over here, excuse me, these edges over here. Those are kind of soft and fuzzy edges. So make sure that in your drawing, they look soft and fuzzy and diffused. And by having these very clearly delineated shapes with very specific qualities to their edges, do you get that metallic look? And then the last piece of the equation is to keep pushing the value for its true resolution, meaning for its true darkness or lightness, but only in context to those original three groups, right? So you always want to um, keep working on the value, darkening it, then lean back, squint your eyes while you're zoomed out, and then think back to your three groups. Now that I added the extra accent, does it still group with my three values or did I get now too dark in my middle value group? So always related back to those big three groups. Now let's talk very briefly about why metallic items are a little bit confusing. It's because they do not have the same light logic as opaque items. Like if you have something made out of porcelain where you see clearly where the shadow and the light mass are. Instead, they are reflective. They are basically mirrors. If you have a more tarnished object, the mirror might be more foggy. Those shapes, those reflections basically of the things around it will be a little bit more blurry, but they're basically just showing you what is around them. So think of them as mirrors and the shapes that you will see inside of them are distorted shape versions of the surroundings. So the desk is slightly curved. The highlight from the lamp will be rounded if there is a rounded form that it's stretching across. But just because there are no clear light shadow shapes and they're actually mirrors doesn't mean we have to let that trip us up when we draw. Now that we understand this, you can use that and work around it. So one last word, I also want you to understand that you do not have to have a highly rendered look to your drawing. You can also have your drawing be more sketchy. So look at this example here where I'm not blending any of my marks. They're very hatch-like, but I am grouping still into a middle value, a dark value group, and my highlight group. Those edges are now a little bit more open because I'm using hatch marks instead of um, tightly spaced marks but the theory, the process is still the same. So let's repeat. We begin with a strong underdrawing, establishing clear shapes. We eventually are very clear about the forms. Then we outline our three big value groups. We work the smaller value variations inside of those value groups, paying particular attention to those edge qualities, soft or crisp. And then we work in layers to get to 100% value resolution in multiple passes, always relating everything back to those initial three big value groups. So I hope this was useful for you. And next time you're waiting for your latte to arrive and you're drawing that metal salt shaker, you know exactly how to draw it. My assignment to you is choose a very simple metallic item and just go through the process. And then when you have your drawing finished, be sure to find me on Instagram at Cura Studios, tag me, and I can give you a virtual high five for going through the process.